first time I ever drank coffee, I was probably 21 and I was working in a restaurant doing 16 hours a day and I worked with this textbook Irishman called Paddy who every morning used to make me coffee and I thought I don't like coffee I used to pour it down the sink and one day I was particularly tired and I drank this coffee and it was like a secret door had opened for me and I started I was quite happy with the good quality instant coffee in a big mug and I think as my education and my knowledge developed, my palate developed and it's quite a big part of my life. You know, I love coffee culture. Uh, I like going out for coffee, but also like having coffee at home. I think as a chef, coffee acts as a kind of a glue that brings you all together. You know, the one thing that you do when you're working in a busy kitchen environment, you've all got your own individual roles and responsibilities. We'd always sit down and have a brew. And then also we saw it as, um, a, much more as a restaurateur, as it was a, a huge part of the meal, but the overall dining experience. So if you think about a restaurant experience, you know, you'll go out and you'll have an aperitif, you have a glass of champagne, you have an amazing meal. The last thing you ever have is a cup of coffee. So for me, it always like, it was like the grand finale. So a good coffee could make or break a dining experience. Performing Chef is a business that I set up about eight years ago, and I'd kind of done with the restaurant business, you know, I'd kind of, achieved what I wanted to do in that space and I wanted to take my culinary knowledge and my sports knowledge and kind of combine the two things together so what the business does is provides practical application you know sports nutrition you know the business gives no nonsense advice to recreational and professional athletes so if you've got a, a goal or you've got an event that you would like to perform well at I'll do a food plan based around your lifestyle your diet your aspirations and your skill set. Well, coffee is one of these things that improves sporting performance beyond all measure. Until fairly recently, um, you know, caffeine was actually banned um, because it had such performance aids. I think first and foremost, culturally, it's great. You know, we have the coffee ride within cycling, but there's huge benefits of having caffeine ahead of high intensity efforts and also in longer events, you know, to have say a caffeine gum or a caffeine gel in, in later stages of endurance events has been proven to improve mental clarity, focus and also energy levels. The dishes that we tend to use coffee is breakfast first and foremost, um, either to do like a, a chocolate coffee porridge or a birch muesli or secondly in like energy snacks. I've got a fantastic recipe for like a no-bake brownie which uses coffee infused with dates and again that's really handy as a sort of snack during the working day or also when you're training. The, the thing I love about the job I do now is that there's a, a huge similarity between working in a, in a fine dining restaurant, you know, that kitchen bags and also elite sport stroke cycling. The, the mentality, you know, the goal, the, the teamwork, the effort, you know, that laser line focus to achieve something great is very, very similar. When we were looking at the van, we wanted to have the best in class really, you know, I want something that I could transport and store on my bikes and, and travel and camper. But it was also like, how do you get a really good cup of coffee? And the problem with having, say, a really good machine and a nice setup at home is when you go out, you kind of spoil. You know, it can almost ruin the coffee experience because you'll be at a service station or you'll be trying to get a cup of coffee. And it's, it's always a disappointment. So we wanted to put a linear mini machine in the van. It was, it was really about having an aspirational product that was also functional, that we can have a brilliant brew anywhere, on the road, in a field, in a car park, and just make it really the best that we could. I think with coffee, people shouldn't find it intimidating. You know, if I go around somebody's house and say, you want a coffee? I'm not gonna say, oh, have you got, you know, some Colombian beans, you know, have you got a beautiful cold brew extraction? And we have a cup of coffee in the chat and that can be just as enjoyable and going to like a, a beautiful coffee shop that you're talking with the barista and you're having all these different grinds and everything else. So I, I very much, I'm very open about it. I think we all got to recognize that our coffee experience and the journey is very individual. There's a time and a place for measuring everything and there's time for just relaxing and enjoying a good brew.